Hello fellow subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vivs from Slidner here. In this video, I'm going to talk about JavaScript syntax. Now if you guys are new to programming and if you heard this word syntax and you're wondering what does it mean, people say syntax of this, syntax of that and so on. You see, a programming language like JavaScript or any other language for that matter is very much like your English. You have a grammar in English. If you say something incorrectly, or if you write something incorrectly, people will notice and they say that, hey dude, that's not the way you're supposed to say it or write it. The same way, when you write code in any programming language, including JavaScript, there is something called syntax, which is nothing but the grammar of the language. In other words, there are certain things that you must do and certain things that you must not do before you write code. So that's what in this video we are going to discuss about. So I'm going to show you a very simple piece of JavaScript code to add two numbers. We are going to make first number as say where a equals to 15. Now again, if you guys notice, forget about the where for now. It's just a way of declaring some variable. Now there's 15 being stored somewhere on your RAM. And what you have is your a, which is the variable that you guys have declared referring something now of course this doesn't make much sense so you can probably say something like number one now notice how I have named it the first alf word is completely small every subsequent word that follows has its first alphabet capital now this is the way you guys are supposed to name identifiers number one is what you call as an identifier in JavaScript same way I can make another number by saying where second number I should have said number two but then never mind it's 25 now notice one more thing this is what is called a statement in JavaScript. One single line which is terminated by a semicolon. The semicolon was optional. However, it is recommended that you put it. Now I want to add these two numbers. So I can make a third number where I can say where third number equals to just simply add them by saying number one plus number two or second number, whatever. So this is the way I add them. Now I simply want to show the result to you guys on the screen. Or to the user who is going to be running this in a browser so I can simply use some alert over here and I can say third number now of course if you don't know what the alert does don't worry about it it simply pops up a dialog and it has this value being displayed inside that dialog now at this point third number is 15 plus 25 which is 40 that's gonna be displayed to you guys on the screen now just to make you guys or remember what you guys have done what we can do is add comments for example we can put two forward slashes and we can say third number is sum of first number and second number you can write whatever you want but remember this has to be just one line you cannot have it over here you'll have to put a forward slash again if you guys want to write one more comment but let's say you want to write a whole paragraph in that case you can use the multi-line comment for example you can have forward slash asterisk and just press enter there's another forward slash asterisk between this you can write whatever the hell you guys want this is kind of like making a note saying that this piece of code does what I have written over here so that's the way you make notes in JavaScript programming language so at this point if you guys go and run this here in Google Chrome as you guys notice the alert actually popped up a dialog box which says 40 here which is the addition of 15 and 25 or number one and second number it's inside the script tag where I've written all the code. So this is just the beginning of JavaScript. So what are the things that form a part of your JavaScript syntax? Now like English, which has nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and I don't know what other things it has, but JavaScript has certain things like case sensitivity, identifiers, comments, and statements. Now the first thing I need to tell you guys is very important. Think about this. You wanna make a calculator in Google Chrome. Let's say it's an online calculator that you want to design using JavaScript. So the person, the other user starts your browser and he goes there and he enters the two number. Where are you going to store it? Those two numbers are going to be stored somewhere inside your RAM. There are, let's say you have eight gigabytes of RAM. You don't know where those numbers are going to get stored, but rather what you have is something just like mathematics if you guys remember in mathematics you used to have x plus y is 10 x minus y is 3 find the value of x and y and you used to call them variables the same way when you talk about programming you have certain variables like x y z that are capable of storing numbers in other words they are simply names that you guys use to refer to the values that are stored in ram for example if you say x equals to 10 
you have 10 being stored somewhere inside your RAM and X is the way you refer or you give that memory that that value a particular name so that you can easily use it anywhere else let's talk about case sensitivity first one of the most important things everything is case sensitive variables function names operators don't worry if you don't know what these things mean the whole idea is something like this if you write test that is different from test which has a capital T that is different from test which is all caps lock in other words even a single character changed capital or small makes a difference that is what case sensitivity means in JavaScript now there's a certain word in JavaScript now we will be talking about this there is something called type of now like I said you make your own stuff in JavaScript at the same time JavaScript also has certain words that have special meanings and you guys use those words in fixed situations there is something called type of which is actually a keyword that was designed or you can say created by JavaScript itself now you cannot use this word for anything other than finding the type of a particular data now if you don't understand what this type of does don't worry about it I'll be talking about it in the next video when we start talking about keywords and what they do but the whole idea for me saying this is certain reserved words cannot be used directly however you can change their case and you can use them but remember this is not a recommended practice in most cases next let's talk about identifiers now what are these things called identifiers now like I was saying you have numbers stored on your RAM and you wanna have a simple way of calling them or referring them inside your code so you give them names like X is 10 Y is 25 those names that you give to anything in JavaScript or in most programming languages are what are called identifiers now there are certain rules for giving names the first rule is something like this the first character must be a letter or an underscore or a dollar sign which means number like one two three high is not allowed which means at the rate high not allowed only certain character two characters that is underscore and dollar sign or an alphabet from small a to small z capital A to capital Z is allowed as the first letter when you're naming something like a variable or something else all other characters may be letters underscores dollar signs or numbers now numbers are allowed in all the places except the first position but other characters like at the rate or equals to or plus sign they are not allowed anywhere when you're trying to name something in JavaScript now if you guys are wondering why am I naming this and what is going on don't worry we will be talking about variables in the next video and you will understand what this is all about now there is a certain convention that you guys are supposed to follow when you're naming things like I said a equals to 10 good great but if you like th th write thousand lines of code people are gonna wonder what a means rather you can say number one equals to 10 and number two equals to 25 which makes more sense because six months later when you come back and if you open your code file you must be able to understand what you guys wrote six months back and that's the whole idea behind being a successful programmer so what kind of names are valid now counter is a valid name that you guys can give you can give anything you want but these are just suggestions now if you notice my first take a careful look they are two separate words in English my and first in this case when you're talking about something called camel case which I mentioned here saying identifiers use camel case the first word is completely small every subsequent word that follows has its first letter capital for example you can have your second where the first word your is completely small the second word which is second itself has its first alphabet capital his third car now notice carefully there are three different words over here his third car first word completely small remaining all words keep the first letter capital so this is how you name stuff in JavaScript now it's not compulsory to use this format but it is highly recommended because that's the way real programmers write code now let's talk about comments now remember in the morning when someone asked you to go and buy groceries in the evening what you guys did you probably added a note inside your phone or did you wrote it somewhere on your marker board 
saying that hey I gotta go outside in the evening and buy some vegetables and groceries the same way comments are used in JavaScript they are simply nothing but notes that you can say to explain what a particular piece of code does now if your code file is full of code stuff you're not gonna understand in fact no one is gonna understand what you guys have written if you have written hundred lines of nothing but code so every now and then you have to put some note indicating what you're trying to achieve or what you're trying to do in that code now there are two types of comments the first is a single line comment the first thing that you guys notice is this two forward slash over here after this two forward slash you can write whatever the hell you want in that first single line so whatever you write for example let's say you want to make a equals to 25 you can write you can put two forward slash and you can say store the value of a as 25 just as a note so that you guys can remember later what a equals to 25 actually means and what it does now there are some there is something called multi-line comments as well in other words if you want a single line comment put two forward slash and write it on one line but if you want multi-line comments you can write a whole paragraph that you want over here so you start with a forward slash asterisk and you end with an asterisk and a forward slash now of course notice very carefully here in the second and the third line you don't require the asterisk over there they are just put there by whatever tools that you guys guys use out there so before we actually finish with this video I'm gonna go ahead in that JetBrains webstorm and I'm gonna show you what all these things are about so let's go further and explore one more thing that statements now just the way you write sentences in English and you put a full stop the same way you write something called statements in JavaScript and you put a semicolon now it's not compulsory that you put a semicolon in JavaScript at least but if you do not put a semicolon then JavaScript will have to decide where the statement ends for example let's say you want to add two numbers in JavaScript first of all there are two variables a and b and there is something called where now we will be talking about what this where means in the next video so don't worry about it for now just understand that there's a third number called sum which is actually the sum of first two numbers now I have not put a semicolon above but I have put a semicolon below which is the valid and preferred option the first option is valid but it's not recommended because in this case the code which is gonna be run by your JavaScript interpreter who's gonna try and understand what code you have written will have to think hey where should I put a semicolon this guy hasn't put semicolons anywhere and that's gonna take some extra amount of time because the parser is gonna spend time thinking about it now of course there's one last thing that we need to discuss and that's about blocks now you can also have multiple statements grouped together within parentheses for example there is one parentheses there's another one within this all the statements that are put together are considered to be forming one single group of statements now we will be talking about this in more detail in the upcoming videos but for now in the next video let's further explore variables and try to understand what we are exactly doing in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide Nerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching we'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day